Oh, the honorable members, the nominees before you. You are Susan Nahumicha Wafula. Yes, sir, I am. Uh, will the clerk administer the oath? You have a choice between the Quran, the Bible, and affirmation depending on your faith. Bible, sir. I, Susan Nahumicha Wafula, do hereby swear to testify on all matters in question and tell this committee the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Members, we'll uh, now have our last uh, appearance of the day. I'll start by informing the committee that I know the nominee uh, pretty well. She has worked with me and for me in part of my political work. Uh, this will not in any way embed my ability to guide you to vet her and ask questions relating to her nomination. We will introduce ourselves, uh, Dr. Susan. This committee is set up under the standing orders of Parliament, the law relating to appointments, and the Constitution. Its primary duty is to assess your suitability to hold the office to which the President has nominated you that is uh, to be the Cabinet Secretary for Health. You will interact with this committee for 90 minutes. They'll ask you questions or make comments about you, your work, and even your life, if they know anything about it. Uh, the proceedings are not adversarial. You are encouraged to answer questions through the chair, and members will routinely ask questions through the chair. We will uh, introduce ourselves to you. The chair is uh, yours truly, the Speaker of the National Assembly. Uh, I'll invite the Deputy Speaker, and upon introduction, I want to inform the House that apart from the members of the committee, we have allowed in one member as a friend of the committee, the Dr. Nikal, member for SEME in Kisumu County, who has a rich history of having been a doctor, a DMS, a PS Health, but above all, he commands tremendous respect from uh, both sides of the House in his conduct as a member. Good evening, uh, Dr. Susan Wafula. Uh, first, I want to congratulate you on your nomination as Cabinet Secretary for Health. Um, thank you. Uh, and I'm Gladys Boss, uh, member for Asingishu County and also Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. Karibu. Kimani. Kimani, Shungwa, Member of Parliament for Kikuyo. Uh, my name is Opio Wandai, uh, MP Ugunja. My name is Junet Mohammed, MP Sona East. I am Owen Bayer, MP for Kilifi North. Robert Mbui, MP Kadiani. Rehab Mukami, County MP Nyeri. My name is Ferdinand Wanyonyi, Member of Parliament 
at Wansoya County. May I also take this opportunity to say that uh, I know uh, Dr. Susan Nahumicha because she actually comes from Wansoya County. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. George Gitonga Murugara, Member of Parliament for Taraka Constituency in Taraganindi County. David Kosing, my name, MP Poko South West Pokot County. Abdul Rahim Daud, MP for North Dimenti, Meru County, and a member of this committee. Honorable Mishimboko, MP Likoni, also a member of this committee. And Nelson Rapkoech, uh, MP Belgood Constituency. Good evening. I'm Kale Bamisi, MP Saboti, and the Chair. Allow me also to declare interest under Standing Order 90 that the nominee before us she is known to me. She comes from Transoya. We've also done a lot of uh, political activities during the Cod Coalition and later on NASA, where you are the principal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, I've also seconded uh, to Kitale National Polytechnic because of uh, leadership skills. Thank you. Uh, Dido Raso, MP Saku, Marsabet County. Well, thank you, Chair. Abdi Shuri, MP Balambala, Garissa County. No interest to declare. Emma Semeri, MP Teso South, Busia County. Dr. James Nikal, Member of Parliament for SEME, constituency in Kisumu County, and a friend of this committee, attending mainly because of my special interest and passion in matters health. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Mule, MP Matungulu. I'm glad to sit with my senior and my mentor. My name is Gikaria David, Nakuru Town is constituency. Naisula Lesuda, MP Samburu West. Thank you. Uh, Susan Nahumicha, we will uh, proceed as follows. Uh, we will give you, after going through some documentation checks, an opportunity of not more than 10 minutes, the lesser the better, to tell the committee the story of your life up to where you are sitting. Upon doing so, we open the... Sorry, I have not invited the clerk to introduce her team. Florence, I uh, keep on forgetting. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Sitting in for the acting clerk, I'm Florence Satenya Bonyo, Director, Audit Appropriations at Other Select Committee. Committees with me is uh, Mr. Michael Karuru, uh, immediate left, uh, the Deputy Director, Legal Services, and behind him is a team of officers uh, in the Committee Secretariat. Thank you. So we will give you 10 minutes to tell us the story of your life, whereafter we'll open the plenary to the committee to ask you whatever questions the members desire to ask you. But before that, let's uh, do some check on your documentation uh, to confirm. Uh, do you have your tax compliance certificate from KRA? Switch on the microphone. Yes, I do. Do you have your Higher Education Loans Board uh, clearance certificate? Yes, I do, and I was not a beneficiary. Do you have your clearance with the Ethics and Non-Corruption Commission? I do. Do you have a certificate of good conduct from DCI? I do. Have you ever been charged and convicted of an offense in a court of law? No, sir. Are you a dual citizen of Kenya and any other jurisdiction? I'm only Kenya. At a personal level, what is your net worth in terms of finance? 
my network uh, chair is uh, about 101 million composed of uh, a townhouse that I own in Siokimau. I have an apartment in Siokimau. I have some land in Kangundo. I have some land in Transoya County. I have land in Bongoma County. I have land in Kakamega County. I have uh, shares and deposits in uh, circles, two circles, Waumini Sako and uh, UN Women Sako. I have uh, dividends from uh, where I have placed my shares, one of them, Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Thank you, sir. We'll now open the conversation with the nominee. I'll, I'll give the first shot to the debut speaker. Oh, my. I'm so sorry, members. I think uh, diminishing returns are setting in. <laughs> Speaker, speaker, it's a quarter past six. It's allowed. Yeah. But, but maybe uh, there's something she said. You said you have shares in Cooperative Bank of Kenya or dividends as part of your declared wealth. Shares. Shares. Yes. Okay. And that come million. after her ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can interrogate her on that after her ten minutes. You have now your ten minutes or less to tell us the story of your life. Thank you, Chair, and uh, honorable members, for giving me an opportunity to appear before you this evening and tell the committee members and the Kenyans at large the story of my life. I was born in uh, 1979 in Kericho, specifically Londiani, to a policeman and a policewoman. And later they moved and we settled in uh, Transoya County in a place called Sikhendu, where I largely grew up in that area. Members and chairs, you are aware, policemen and policewomen in this country are people who are moved from one station to another. So my parents were being moved from one station to another to work, and it's that time that I was taken up by my maternal uncle, who I lived with during my primary education, which I finished at a school called Baraton Primary School. It is in Kiminini constituency in Transoya County in 1992. And I'm happy to tell honorable members that in the KCP exams of 1992, I was the best student in then Transoya district. After that, I joined Mary Hill Girls High School, a national school in Thika, where I did my secondary school education. While at Mary Hill, I was engaged in several, uh, several leadership positions, one of them chair of journalism, and then I thought that I would end up in uh, media. And uh, after Mary Hill, immediately after, uh, I got a call from KCB Bank to join them and work for them. And it was basically because I was very good in volleyball, so they were recruiting for their team. And my mom was like, who does volleyball for a living? the commercial bank. So then I moved to MTC, Kenya Medical Training College, where I trained as a pharmaceutical technologist and graduated in 2000. Just to let members know that while at MTC, my parents, a police man and police woman, could not afford much. So from the second year of MTC, I did odd jobs to pay my school fees. After MTC, I managed to get a job in uh, one of the pharmaceutical retail pharmacies in this country where I worked for a period of time. During that time, I was also doing a degree in pharmacy, online degree from EG University in Turkey, where I completed. However, I did not get registered as a pharmacist because of the difference in legislation, the difference in the number of years covered in Turkey and covered in Kenya. But after that, while working, I proceeded to do a degree in uh, procurement and supplies from Jomo Kenyatta University. And by the time I was doing that degree, I was working at Mission for Essential Drugs and Supplies. Chair and members, I stopped working in the pharmacy 
My last stage as a pharmaceutical technologist was in charge of AAR healthcare in Kisumu County. So when I joined MEDS, I started as a junior operations officer. But while working as an operation officer, one of my responsibilities was to consolidate orders and send medical supplies to faith-based hospitals in this country. I then realized that there was a gap, that any time I was fulfilling orders from these faith-based uh, hospitals, we could not fulfill them at 100%. And at that note, I told my supervisor that I think we have a problem in procurement. And I volunteered myself to work in procurement at MEDS. When I volunteered to work in procurement, that is when now I enrolled again for my master's degree while working there. And I ran through the ranks in procurement as an officer. Up to the time that I was leaving MEDS, I left as the procurement manager. And as you are well aware, Mission for Essential Drugs and Supply is the second biggest, largest medical supply chain organization in this country that is run in a way that I could say very efficiently. So I worked at Mission for Essential Drugs for a good seven years. Chair, I left in good terms when I had just finished my master's. And uh, for the member's sake, I briefly interned at KEMSA during my master's level for a period of three months. After that chair, I joined the Nairobi Women Hospital, where I was in charge of procurement. Chair and members at Nairobi Women Hospital, I was in charge of end-to-end -end supply chain. What I mean by end-to-end -end is that I was in charge of the tomatoes that cooked the patient meals. I was in charge of the linen that was spread on patient beds. I was in charge of the equipment that was used in theater. And what many people don't like to hear, that I was in charge to ensure even the equipment in the mortuary worked while at MEDS. Honorable Chair and members, I left MEDS in 2016 to run for an elective seat in Transoya County, women rep. At that point, my party did not give me a ticket, so I dropped out at the nominations level. And uh, I came back, and in 2017, I got another job with the Global Programs for Research, which is an affiliate of University of California, San Francisco, as their head of supply chain. And that is where I have worked to date. I took leave to also run for Women Rep in 2022. This time, I was lucky I got the party ticket and went all the way into the elections. I didn't make it, and so I returned back to work after my leave. I'm still an employee of Global Programs for research. Chair, I have uh, been appointed on the Council of the Kitale National Polytechnic, which I joined in 2019. I served in the Education, Training and Research Committee. I served in Finance and Administration Committee, and I was the chair of the Human Resource Committee. Chair, I have also done consultancy services, previously for Ministry of Health, in commodity management for Nyamira, Kisi, and Megori County, where I was training all cadres of health on commodity management. Chair, I've also done consultancy, which I'm still engaged in, with a firm called 54 Gene for Research and Discovery Limited that is scheduled to set up one of the biggest genomics laboratory in Kenya, and I'm still consulting for them. Chair, that's the story of my life, but I also need to say that I am married, I'm a mother of two biological children, but I take care of two as a guardian, and many that I take care of who live with their parents. Thank you very much, Chair and members. The floor is open, members. We'll start with the, the debut speaker. Everybody will have a go. Um. Dr. Susan, uh, congratulations again. Um, I want to ask you this. Uh, as you know, uh, we've had very many overlapping and fragmented schemes uh, in the health sector. There is NHIF, there is Linda Mama, the civil servant scheme, the school children and elderly support uh, schemes and 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 uh, all and also some other types of social health insurance. 
Uh, the Kenyan Kwanza Manifesto seeks to provide NHIF for all Kenyans without exclusion in a policy called leaving no one behind. What interventions will you propose to streamline NHIF and all these other schemes? You will take four questions and answer them in the order that you desire. Kimani Chungwa. Chair, maybe she would first begin by clarifying because I heard Don Abuanyoni refer to her together with the deputy speaker as doctor, whether she's a doctor. Because when I'm going through copies of the certificates in the, our files, I don't see anything that has to do anything with a doctor other than the diploma in healthcare from Kenya Institute of Management. Maybe that would be the first clarification because even the degree from Turkey is not in the file. Uh, to uh, I was asking about the dividends because the shares uh, because looking at uh, what you have listed as part of your wealth the shares are not listed maybe you would also give us a schedule uh, probably of uh, what constitutes your net worth but on to health issues, and I, I must indicate, uh, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting, Nakumicha, I, I am rather impressed by her background uh, in relation to what you are, uh, have been nominated to do, especially on matters to do with procurement and uh, logistics, and uh, it's good that you have also interned at KEMSA. I hope that was not during the COVID games of billionaires uh, scandal. Uh, but having worked at Meds, and you say it's the second largest, I believe, after Kemsa in the country, I would want to hear what is it that you will uh, come to do at the ministry that you streamline operations at Kemsa and make it more efficient, more cost effective for the people of Kenya in terms of uh, procurement and delivery of. Uh, cost-effective drugs uh, to both our public and private hospitals in line with our Kenya Kwanza Manifesto. Uh, two, the, the issue of community health volunteers in the country is an issue that has been uh, debated over the years. I would want to hear your thoughts on what you want to do with community health volunteers uh, that uh, volunteer uh, in our communities. Then eventually, uh, finally, there are about 514 healthcare practitioners. Uh, if you may not know, you could or you may not know, I'm sure you've done some research at the ministry, that were interviewed in 2021 and they were given appointment letters by the Public Service Commission in December of 2021. Up to date, the ministry is yet to uh, give them the appointment letters. I have not less than 15 WhatsApp and text messages from young Kenyans who had been given those appointments and now waiting for their letters. Uh, do you imagine if you get approved and you take over the ministry that you will ensure these Kenyans get the appointment letters uh, or uh, from your initial analysis of ministry, is it that they don't need these young Kenyans working there? Do we have enough healthcare workers and practitioners? Thank you. One day. Uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Wafula, I in the last term of Parliament, I happen to have interacted closely with the Ministry of Health as chair of the Public Accounts Committee, largely dealing with their audit reports. So I happen to have a rough idea of what uh, goes on in the Ministry of Health, and you also recall that uh, the current CS, because they haven't left office yet, the current CS, uh, Mutahi Kagwe, when he came into office, promised to dismantle the cartels at Afia House. As to whether he succeeded in dismantling the cartels, the jury is out there. But coming back to you, coming back to you, uh, even with your impressive impressive technical background. <clears throat> do, you, do you think you have the wherewithal, the spine, to deal with these cartels? Because unless 
these cartels that have held Afia House hostage are dealt with and dismantled completely, we may not achieve much. So just give Kenya so, and, and this committee the assurance that you, have, that you are equipped, well equipped, to confront this, uh, uh, this uh, mafia like cartels uh, once and for all. Thank you. Jeanette, uh, thank you, Chair. It? Chair, my question to the nominee is, uh, Chair, uh, the functions of, uh, of health are majorly devolved they have under the new constitution. And uh, <clears throat> there is uh, uh, a lot going on at the county level in terms of health. But likewise, there have been a lot of problems for the last 10 years since devolution came on health matters at the county level, where whether it is medicines, whether it is uh, staff and medical personnel, there have been serious issues. What are your thoughts on how to deal with the ministry in conjunction with the counties at the county level? What do you, what do you think you can do differently that can make things work better this time? Secondly is uh, the NHIF. There is a big problem in, it, in, in NHIF and people feel that it's not functioning, it's not working properly. What do you think you will do differently that will make NHIF work like any other national insurance scheme, like the way the private ones perform for their, for their clients? And lastly, there was this medical equipment leasing that was started by the last government, and it involved a lot of money, 40 billion, I think, and it was imposed on the counties. And we normally deduct that money here when we are doing the division of revenue at the, at the parliament level, at the source. Even the counties are not given opportunity to pay directly to the national government. Do you think that was a good scheme? Do you think it should be continued? Or what do you think? What are your thoughts on, them, on that? You can answer those four. Then we'll take another batch. Thank you, Chair and members. I will uh, respond to the question in the order in which they came. Honorable Gladys, you sought to find out how I will handle the fragmented um, type of uh, insurance that we have at the National Hospital Insurance Fund. And as you clearly put it, we have Linda Mama. We have uh, the one for primary and secondary school children. We also have one for civil servants. Chair and members, uh, I'm sure you already know, and if not, that Linda Mama is about four billion in a year. The one for AFIA for the school going children is another four billion in a year. And the other schemes, but collectively, just if I may use the example of those two, that means we have a total of eight billion that has been fragmented. And in that fragmentation, you will note that a mother who is covered under Linda Mama also has a child who is covered under the Afia one. What that means is that that family has been covered twice in terms of payment. The one for Linda Mama has been paid for, the one for the education has been paid for. So what is supposed to be done is that we are supposed to consolidate. And that would be my suggestion, and uh, it is also in our plan for Kenya Kwanzaa, that the payments are per household vis-a-vis -vis per persons. Because if you take the total of Linda Mama and Afia, you put together the eight billion, it can take care of very many households. And you know, per household in Kenya per year is uh, 6,000 shillings. If you divide that eight billion, I do not have a calculator with me, but I'm sure it will cover over a million households. So I will be suggesting and, uh, that we move and consolidate these schemes so that then we accrue a lot of benefit from it. And as you may be aware, members, is that insurance works on the premise of the more the better. Uh, so I believe with that intervention, we shall be able to streamline. Uh, Honorable Kimani, you sought to find out why the chair referred to me as Dr. Susan. As I said in my introduction, that I did a degree in pharmacy from Turkey. 
But I also said I did not manage to get registered by the Pharmacy and Poisons Board because of the difference in regulations. While I was doing that degree, I was working. I was required by the Pharmacy and Poisons Board and the regulations in this country to do another one year round internally, which I was not able to do because at that moment I was still working. I had a life to live. I had uh, beneficiaries that I had to take care of. So I wasn't registered. And because of that registration, I have always uh, not placed my degree document in my folder so that then questions do not arise. Uh, you also sought to find out whether I have shares or dividends in Cooperative Bank. I believe, uh, Horrible Kimani, you have uh, better prowess in matters finance. Probably I was referring to dividends, whatever it is, but not shares. But I stand to be corrected, and I think my document shows whatever it is that I have. Uh, you also asked, on, uh, based on my experience, how I plan to streamline KEMSA, the cost of drugs, and the issue of community health volunteers. As I said in my introduction, I interned at KEMSA briefly. Yes, okay. uh, Sorry to interrupt, but uh, dividends are from Cooperative Bank or ASACO? Because there's a reason I was asking that, because I see there's somewhere you've put dividends of 1.5 million and dividends of that amount from a bank that is probably paying 10 shillings a share would be a very huge investment and uh, it then would have to reflect in your list of assets but maybe if it's a, if it's a sucker it would thank be you another. chair i have uh shares and dividends from two circles, and that is what makes up uh, the 1.5 million. Back to your question on how I plan to streamline KEMSA. Having interned there, I have um, a view of what it is that happens at KEMSA as a public institution. And as I said, I also worked at MEDS, which is a faith-based institution. And uh, what then I bring to KEMSA, which uh, I'm sorry to say, but most of the public institution, there's some laxity in terms of operational efficiency. While there, I realized we had a problem with quantifications, how they arrive at what they buy for patients. And at MEDS, quantification was almost accurate to the point. How did we do it? Is that we got to know the needs from the faith-based institutions, faith-based facilities. Early in advance, before we did our tender process, we could find out from the hospitals what their requirements were. Based on that, then we worked on quantification. At KEMSA, they do a push system, where then the stocks are pushed down to the facilities. And the facilities are supposed to be pulling from KEMSA. So the push system then means quantification is done at the top, at KEMSA level. And I'm happy because in Kenya Kwanzaa we are talking about bottom up. Therefore the facilities will be bringing up their quantities based on that quantification is done. And that is why you hear at KEMSA right now we have expiries, we have obsolete, is because of poor quantification. So we shall start right by supporting KEMSA to ensure that they do proper quantification for products. Regarding cost of drugs, is um, again because of uh, not quantifying properly, you end up buying wrong quantities at the wrong prices. But more importantly, my suggestion would be like, we do more of local manufacturing. We have molecules that can be manufactured in Kenya. For example, I'm yet to understand why we still import paracetamol. Yet we have companies in Kenya who are manufacturing paracetamol. If we were to buy from these locally manufacturing companies, definitely the cost of paracetamol will be much lower than the important one. Honorable Kimani, the issue of community health workers in this uh, country is that there are some success stories with community health volunteers. And I'll give an example of Kisumu County. They are moving on very well because they are giving stipends to their community health volunteers. And uh, because the... Um, this uh, universal health care, they were doing some tests on a number of counties, then we should learn from the success stories like the one for Kisumu, just to find out how has it worked. Then that is what we can move to the rest of the counties within the country, that these community health volunteers then get a stipend, 
and it can be done on a matching basis. That as much as they are employed by the county governments, then the national government can match that stipend just to, I mean, to, to make them uh, do more work. Then uh, you spoke about the 2021 healthcare workers and uh, members through the chairs, you may know, as much as the health was devolved, on Schedule 4 of the Constitution, there is distribution of functions. There's what was left to the national government and what went to the county governments. Recruitment of uh, healthcare workers, most of it is happening at the county government. So then I shall be working with the county governments, and it's supposed to be collaborative. And I'm aware there are structures that have been put in place to ensure that the county governments are able to work with the national government. Then is to ensure that these healthcare workers are absorbed in their respective counties. Uh, so I may not be able to say that we shall give appointment letters, but once that discussion has happened, well, and I pray that this uh, committee is able to approve of my nomination, then we should be able to work together to ensure that uh, the workers are absorbed. As we know, most of the facilities in this country are ill-equipped. Even with the healthcare workers, there is a shortage. Uh, but also, the executive order, number one of 2022, has uh, created a state um, department of uh, health standards and professional management. So I believe under that uh, state department, then the issues of professional management will be well handled as well in that state department. Thank you. Honorable Wandai, you are concerned about the cartels at Afia House, and I believe uh, I am looking like I'm too weak to handle the cartels. But I would like to assure you that uh, these cartels, having worked in healthcare and uh, supply chain, I believe these are people that I have already worked with. It's just that on a small scale, but now they are on the national scales. And uh, where I have worked previously, Honorable Chair, is that uh, my mantra is P squared, R squared. P squared means process and procedures. R squared is rules and regulations. I am very sure that we will be able to break the cartels, but also be seeking uh, the support of uh, members through bills so that, uh, so that we improve on our uh, procurement regulations and act so that we are able to deal with these cartels. Because at the end of the day, if uh, healthcare is working, even the health of those cartels is taken care of. Uh, Honorable Junette, you asked about devolved functions in terms of uh, the personnel and staff and uh, how to deal with the MOH and the counties. Uh, Honorable Chair, I am aware that uh, we have um, intergovernmental uh, forums that have been put in place. We have the specific health sector forum that brings together the CECs in charge of health from the counties. They meet quarterly and they bring their issues from the counties to MOH. And the issues from these uh, CECs of health then escalate to the Council of Governors. And therefore, I want to believe that the issue of uh, healthcare personnel at the county level, then uh, how the MOH will assist them, should be then discussed at this level. But I also want to believe that most of the time issues work when people are involved. And therefore, we shall be involving everyone, each of the health professionals from the counties, to in decision making. NHIF, you asked, what is it that I will do differently? Through the chair, Honorable Jeanette, NHIF, as um, Honorable Gladys had said initially, is a bit fragmented. But uh, the most important thing that I would like to let uh, this committee know, or they may already be aware, that the population, the workforce in this country is about 16 million, or 19 million thereabout. Out of this total population, one million is in um, a public sector, two million is in private sector. So we have over 11 million people who are in informal sector. And these are the people that we are having a problem with in terms of registration and recruitment into the NHIF. So I will be working together with the county governments to improve enrollment. And through use of the community health volunteers, we should be able then to use them 
in terms of enrolling these people in the informal sector. And you know the people in the informal sector, Honorable Chair and members, is that they rely on a day-to-day -day in terms of uh, their, their, what, they get, what they earn. Therefore, we have to devise mechanisms to ensure that even from their day-to-day, -day, then we are able to help them to achieve the 6,000 uh, 6, monthly contribution to NHIF. But again, uh, in our Kenya Kwanzaa plan, we are focusing on promotive, preventive uh, health care, and therefore that will isn't the burden in uh, terms of health care needs. And the study shows that uh, for every one shilling that you spend on promotive and preventive health care, you save nine shillings in curative. So as an agent of the government, I'll be ensuring that then we focus more on promotive and preventive health care through the NHIF, where they can even have wellness schemes where people go for screening once in a year just to check their health status. Honorable Chair, a question was asked on uh, MES, and uh, you rightfully say that almost 40 billion was put into it, and what are my thoughts? Chair, while I worked at uh, Nairobi Women Hospital, we were able to install two CT scans, one 64 slice and the other one 120 slice at zero cost while I was in procurement. How did we do it? I sourced for the manufacturer of the CT scans. I told them that we have an opportunity, that we have patience, but we do not have the money to buy the CT scan. So we agreed on a revenue share agreement that they come and install the CT scans, we provide the patients, and we share the revenue. They take 80%, Nairobi Women takes 20%. And in that, we are able to install a CT scan at Adams and another CT scan at Rongai at zero cost. What am I saying, Chair? That in the world today of management, there's what we call business outsourcing, that you are left to focus on your core mandate. For example, our hospitals, their core mandate is to provide health care. And therefore, if we have suppliers, and in this case we do, that supply the MES equipment, it is a good thing. All we need to be asking of ourselves is how was it entered into and how do we improve it. As I sit here today in my home county of Transoya, we have a dialysis machine in Transoya County which I believe Transoya County in itself would never have managed to buy that dialysis, the dialysis. So we have gains that have been made. Many counties, many patients have been able to access services that they would never have accessed before. But we have some small issues. For example, I'm told a county that has not installed their equipment because they were not able to get three-phase power installation. What is that? Honestly, it takes a phone call from the governor to Kenya Power to have three-phase install installation. So why should we keep equipment wrapped in a box waiting for three-phase installation? So I believe there are a lot of discussions that need to go into that, that uh, we look at the bigger picture, which is the benefits that have accrued from this uh, equipment. And if there's anything that we can correct, then it is corrected at the review of the contract. Thank you, Chair. Next batch. Owen Bayer, Owen Honorable Robert Mbui, Mish Mbogo, Daoud Posing. We'll take five. Yes, I have not said I'll follow the, the line. <laughs> I may skip and start with Naisula. Okay, th thank you, Speaker. And Chair, um, uh, Wafula, Susan, nice to meet you. I uh, just have one, two questions. One very simple. Uh, if you look at uh, Schedule 4, which you referred to, and Item 23, it talks about uh, referral hospitals, that referral hospitals are uh, managed by national government. But the practice in this country has been that referral hospitals uh, like the Moi, the Kenyatta University, the ones that are built by university are actually managed by university. But we have a very controversial uh, issue at Kenyatta University 
and the referral hospital where the university has actually been denied a chance to run the hospital and to manage it and that other board members have been nominated by the minister and put in charge of uh, of the university and they've been told this is a national referral hospital and therefore even students at KU cannot access that facility they have to apply like any other and there has been a lot of controversy about that as you step in or if you are, not, you are confirmed to step into the shoes of uh, CS Health how are you going to solve the problem at, uh, at Kenyatta University teaching a referral hospital also Health Commission has been demanded, the Health Commission has been demanded to bring in all these services together and we have a Health Commission in this country. It was one of the items of the BBI. And doctors and practitioners in the uh, health sector have demanded that counties should release the function and that we have a Health Commission just like we have TSC and other commissions to manage uh, uh, medical services in this country, health services in this country. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think is that's the way to go, or we allow uh, counties uh, to manage the health sector and also the national government manage another sector? I thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to say that. Uh, Owen, this, switch off your mic. This <clears throat> nominee has been uh, very clear in answering questions, in fact, quite impressive only that she repeated the P-square and R-square. I think it's a, it's a, it's a Kenya Kwanzaa new slogan. <laughs> we heard that earlier. But, uh, Chair, I, 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 I'm aware that... Um, Chair, on a point of order, <laughs> Kenya Kwanzaa had no such slogan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, know, you, know, you know, Chair, you have to tell uh, the Honorable Leader of Majority to, to, to relax. You know, sometimes you, you must... Uh, you don't take everything too seriously. But uh, anyway, it allowed chair. you to fish far and wide. <laughs> so we, go. We are, we are in agreement on that, chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chair, thank you, thank you. Um, chair, the the Ministry of uh, Health has, uh, in the past, uh, been a bit apprehensive about uh, the introduction of genetically modified organisms, GMO foods. And um, uh, until proper research is done so that uh, the health of Kenyans that are, uh, you know, that partake of these foods uh, is, is assured. Um, in the recent past, uh, and of course we know that the religious uh, organizations have also been against it because of the fact that it's unnatural, because I think there is a belief that uh, food should be provided in a natural manner in which God provided it. Now, um, in the recent past, I think the cabinet passed uh, that uh, we can introduce GMO foods. Are you comfortable with that position as uh, uh, the nominee for, for health, considering that uh, there is no research that has cleared this situation. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, Mishi Mbogo, the Honorable. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, to the nominee, you sound very conversant on this area of health, but my question will just be not to be compromised, but the many cartels in the MOH NHIF and other hospitals. That's just a comment on a light note. My question is on mental health. Currently, it seems our government has not taken a lot of care in terms of mental health, and they have not even prioritized it. I'm looking for an example in Mombasa County, where the population is over one million people, and we only have a very small center at Portree's Hospital for mental health. Recently, we have seen so many incidences occurring from our public sector, be it the military, we have seen some soldiers killing their families, committing suicide. We have seen in our university, in our schools, and yet nothing has been done to ensure that we have access to mental health. This is high